Are you ready for pain? Are you ready for suffering? If the answer is yes, then you're ready. I just wanted to let you know that Aragorn is fucking black and you can't tell me shit. Let me repeat that. Aragorn is fucking black and you can't tell me shit. That's the TikTok. Don't care, didn't ask, cry about it, stay mad, get real owl mauled seed cope. <laughs> I think this person is asking a question in good faith, so I'm going to try my best to explain it. The card game Magic the Gathering recently released their Aragorn and Arwen card for their new Lord of the Rings set, and Aragorn is a person of color. Having Aragorn as a POC is not disrespecting Tolkien in any way. This is one artist's interpretation. And at the end of the day, it's kind of a moot point because Aragorn's skin color doesn't affect the story at all. However, this same thought process does not apply to stories that are being told when the marginalized community is the focal point or where race and skin color plays an important factor. In a movie that's more historically accurate, it would be the equivalent of casting an older white woman as Harriet Tubman, or casting a young white man as the Black Panther. Those stories are intrinsically tied to the color of that person's skin. And the color of Aragorn's skin is not. This is not disrespecting Tolkien, but more importantly, it doesn't matter. Tolkien's dead. We here in the 21st century need to make sure that the Tolkien community is a welcoming place for everybody. Good talk. Welcome to Magic the Gathering, a show where I, a uh, gay, talk about Magic the Gathering. A card game. A new set is about to drop, something called the Lord of the Rings, and we have a new hottie to look at, so let's get right at it. Here he comes. It's Aragorn, who is looking absolutely stunning in this incredible work of art. I love everything about this. However, some people don't. So let's get into that real, real quick. Now there's a lot of people who are upset on the internet and these people aren't necessarily worth listening to, but they are upset that Aragorn is black when clearly Aragorn is white in the books. We say clearly because it doesn't matter. Let's talk about the role of art and what art does in society and why art exists in society. Art reflects the current values of that society. Lord of the Rings was written in a specific period of time with different values and different ideas. Magic the Gathering's Lord of the Rings is created in a different society to portray different ideals and inspire people. The goal of art is not to inspire, to make us reflect not only of what society is, but what society could be, what society should be. This Aragorn helps represent a more diverse society, a more accepting society. This is an aspirational piece. It is taking a common hero and reimagining them in a unique and wonderful way. Works of art are enhanced when they are reimagined and reimagined well. Shakespeare has been reimagined millions of times and before anybody comes at it. Yes, there was even an all black cast with a white Othello because it said something different about racism. It said something different about society. It had a point to make. If your art is incapable of surviving a reimagining, it is not a good piece of art. It should be able to. It thrives when it is reimagined. It is upheld by generations as a thing worth reimagining, a thing worth redoing, and a thing worth honoring in multiple ways. This art is a, an amazing, great step forward for this franchise and for this piece of art and does wonders. Far from destroying Lord of the Rings, it helps bring it to a new audience and makes it available to people across the spectrum. Wonderful. This is awesome because I've never seen myself. And that right there is why representation matters. End of story. I don't care how many people are sad because though that's not their vision of elves or what they think Tolkien meant or any of that. Irrelevant. Utterly irrelevant next to the simple joy that that one person felt at seeing themselves in the Lord of the Rings story. And we know it's not just going to be that one creator who is one of my favorite creators on here. Someone you have to follow. Someone who kicks my ass regularly in terms of making me rethink my own biases and ideas. And it's hard and I love it. 
And just to see that amount of emotion from one person and know that so many others are going to feel the same way because they get what I've had all my life of seeing myself on screen and knowing that's me. And as a bonus to someone who loves Magic the Gathering, knowing that it comes from a Magic the Gathering card, this is a good day for representation in the fandom. I mean, three things. One, I have no idea who you are. Two, this isn't blackface. And three, if you don't want to support this, I don't know what's wrong with you, because this is fucking awesome, my guy. Out and telling a bunch of people to go fuck themselves wasn't really what I wanted to do. Bring that energy into the world. Oh, don't worry, Cass Baby. That's what I'm here for. If you have a problem with this being Aragorn in the Magic the Gathering Lord of the Rings set, you can go fuck yourself. Just for starters, on a basic level, uh, caring about the skin color of a fictional person uh, makes you look like a goofy bozo. And on another side note, even if this art was completely removed and detached from the Lord of the Rings franchise, this is just cool artwork to begin with. The dude looks awesome, even if this was just guy with sword. It just never ceases to amaze me the fucking mental gymnastics racists go through to justify their poor shitty takes. Like, if you're really holding on to one line that describes Aragorn as pale in 1500 pages of the Lord of the Rings, you're fucking goofy. And again, a reminder, he's from a book. You don't really care about Aragorn being white in the book. You care about Aragorn being white in a movie being portrayed by a white actor. You care about Viggo Mortensen. Until this movie, nobody cared. Really, nobody cared what Aragorn looked like. He did such a good job, he did a good job, give credit where it's due, of depicting Aragorn that this is what you're holding on to. Having this be Aragorn now makes no difference to the character in any way, shape, or form. Because like nine out of 10 times, the skin color, race, gender, sexual orientation of a character does not matter in a story unless it's an integral part to the character. Like, I keep seeing that defense. What if they made Black Panther white? And that just shows you lack critical media analysis if that's going to be your go-to, and you're probably just being racist. Black Panther, who is, while, yes, a fictional comic book character, is designed to live in the real world of Earth. Not Middle Earth, not a fantasy world in fantasy times, in, like our world in earth and him being in an african country with african heritage built into the character is integral to who the character is do you see do you get it how that's different than vanilla protagonist aragorn in his core is just a vanilla protagonist in a fantasy story and the color of their skin does not matter the only thing that matters is their race in the world of the story and this is a human the race of man. Aragorn, is the only thing that matters is that he is a man in the Lord of the Rings lore. And I mean man as in human because it is the race of men, not an elf, not an orc, yada yada yada. If Aragorn was a woman all of a sudden, I still wouldn't care. Aragorn just needs to be a human. So yeah, if this bothers you, go fuck yourself, unfollow me, block me, be sure to leave your fantastic takes in the comment section below. It will immediately lead to a block. So, as a huge Lord of the Rings fan, and a fan of Aragorn as a character, and is basically one of my favourite uh, characters in fiction, here is my take on this. Crying about one artist interpretation in a fucking card game is so pathetic. Because, I guess artists are not allowed to make interpretations of characters, and, you know, it's just their art style. And Tolkien would have never been upset with this at all. The man was born in South Africa and witnessed the segregation when he was young as, in his words, horror. There has also been a letter that has been written by J.R.R. Tolkien on how he dislikes views on race. He would have been fine with Aragorn being black because he knows that it's not his actual creation. It is an artist's interpretation of it. And this isn't the first thing at all that they did to change Aragorn's race. They did it back in the 1970s. In the 1978 Ralph Bakshi movie, uh, you can see that Aragorn is portrayed as a Native American, where... Yeah, the movie was kind of mixed, but still, this was 1978. 
But I guess idiotic channels like these probably miss that fact, seeing that they're more dumber than a pile of bricks and saying the word woke like a fucking Pokemon. It is an artwork. Let people do fucking art. Stop crying about a fucking card. You're 30 and 40 years old. Grow the fuck up. If you're one of those people that's like, it's not canon to... And see, the problem is that the argument doesn't hold up because... It could very well be canon. So a little background before we get started for those of you who haven't read the books or haven't done a lot of research on the topic and have only maybe seen the movies or the Amazon series. This is not one of those series that's in a vacuum. It doesn't take place on some other world like something like Game of Thrones does. Tolkien was explicit and transparent about the fact that his intent for this series was to create a new mythology for England because so much of the original English mythology and stories and legends had been lost to invaders or changed to suit political climates or religious climates. He wanted a new mythology for England. Middle Earth is England, just in the past. Keep that in mind for this next part. So according to Tolkien's timeline, you know, in his notes and letters and things uh, that Chris helped compile, the timeline states that the 6,000 years of recorded human history are the 4th and 5th ages at least. Tolkien said the 5th age would have been due to end around 1958, but if the ages got shorter, it would probably be closer to the beginning of the 7th. In other words, the entirety of recorded human history happens after the end of the Lord of the Rings books. So the three most well-known books take place in the Third Age. And this is where we meet Aragorn, uh, who is Dúnedain. He is a descendant of Numenorians. Now, Numenor, for the uninitiated, is basically Tolkien's Atlantis. It is uh, an island that was gifted to men, to the Adain, um, when they suffered a lot of hardship helping out in a war, and the Valar raised it from the bottom of the sea and gifted it to them so they would have a homeland. This happened at the beginning of the Second Age. So according to Tolkien's reckoning, it would have been about 6,000 years before recorded human history that this race of men took up residence on Numenor, this island. So since the evolutionary record states that what we would recognize as mankind started in Africa, which means that African people would have been around the area when the Adain were gifted Numenor. That means Numenorians could be black, which means Dunedain could be black, which means Aragorn could be black. So, argument defeated. Take your hate and your fake geek boy BS and leave the table. I agree with OP. We don't need this in our hobby. So I've gotten a lot of comments on my last video about just like Aragorn and his depiction of the Magic Gathering card is inaccurate, this is terrible, what are you doing? Some person posted a book description as if I've not read these books a bajillion times. So let's look at some other depictions of Aragorn. You tell me if they're good, if they're bad, and we'll discuss it. Alright, first up we have the three hunters being met by, you know, Aemir and the rest of the Rohirrim riders that he meets. And uh, that's Aragorn with a bowl cut. Possibly looks like he's he's on some drugs of some sort. Oh well. This is from the 1970s animated Lord of the Rings. Uh, as you can see here, this is not a white man. He he has a very interesting haircut, um, and he doesn't wear pants. It's not what he's into. So yeah, this is one of my personal favorites because him and I are rocking mustaches, thus proving the point that I, you know, have a lot in common with Aragorn. But this is the Brothers Hildebrand, and as you can see, this is totally inaccurate to what's in the books because Numenorean men actually can't grow full beards. But then again, it's a mustache. Next up, the Return of the King animated version that came out after the animated Lord of the Rings. That's definitely not... What's stated in the books, but I like it regardless. I like the helm. Ah, uh, yes, Ted Naismith depiction of the three hunters along with Gandalf the White. There's Aragorn again. He's got some kind of long face thing going on, and his hair color has changed once more. So, another different depiction. 
This is actually one of the more accurate, in my opinion, my favorites. This is Frodo and Aragorn in Moria after he had been stabbed or stabbed. Uh, this Aragorn is more accurate to the books. He has what seems like specks of gray um, in his hair, no beard of any sort. You know, his skin isn't pale. I don't know why a man would all of a sudden be pale who spends most of his time outside, but whatever. Another fun one was some of that 1960s style that we see with some of like the Wheels of Time covers. Pretty sure that's the same artist, but you can see our man back there with his flowing garments, uh, what looks like blondish hair and a uh, hat as well. So another far different depiction of this man than we see in the movies or anything else. Of course, we got our boy Aragorn, Viggo Mortensen from the Peter Jackson movies, the most known version that we all recognize and enjoy. Overall, there are numerous depictions of the majority of characters in Lord of the Rings. But it's not fair to tell someone that their interpretation is incorrect. This is a book, it's open from interpretation by the reader, regardless of what's stated in the text. You need to respect other people and respect the fact that we don't always have to agree. Follow for more.